Hello friends, welcome to our virtual open house brought to you by the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration, also known as the CDTFA and sponsored by our field operations division, also known as FOD. We are super excited about this event today and glad that all you guys can make it. My name is Chris Almazon. I'm one of the training coordinators at the CDTFA and I'll be your MC and host. California wants you to join us and be part of a growing workforce. So the TFA, CDTFA is starting the upcoming year right by adding team members. We know that unemployment is at extremely high rate and the CDTFA is part of the statewide hiring project. California not only needs you, but wants you. And so fresh new faces means new ideas, new perspective that are needed throughout the entire agency. The CDTFA is moving forward and we are continuously investing in our team members. We are offering promotional opportunities, diversity and inclusion initiatives, excellent mentoring, mentoring programs, multi-level recognition programs, and on-the-job training to help you flourish in your position. Now, working for the state provides a reliable source of income, great benefits, and an incredible work-life balance. This is the premier place to work. Now the fi final filing date is on November 1st and the most qualified candidates will be invited to participate in a panel interview tentatively in the early weeks of December. The effective date would be tentatively, tentatively in mid to late January. Today, you will hear some testimonials from our current team members and why they like working here and why you should work at the CDTFA. We'll watch a few videos about who and what is the CDTFA about, and we'll also inform you about the positions we are hiring for and how to start the application process. Also, folks, at the end of our broadcast, be sure to stick around because we will have a breakout session. Now, throughout this open house, we want to keep things interactive, and we know you guys will have some questions, and we want to encourage you to send those to recruitment at cdtfa.ca.gov. Those questions submitted will be answered at the end of our live broadcast. Please be sure to put your name and your location. Now, what we're gonna be showing you next is a video produced by our media team, providing an overview on the CDTFA role and its objective. You'll better understand who we are and what we do. So media team, let's run that video. The California Department of Tax and Fee Administration, CDTFA, administers 37 taxes and fees. We handle sales and use tax and special taxes and fees, which include collections for alcoholic beverages, tobacco, cannabis, fuel, waste, and special environmental programs. We collect approximately $75 billion annually. This revenue supports local essential services throughout California, transportation, public safety and health, libraries, schools, social services, your environment, your community. We're in this together. Now, in less than a minute, that video summed up what we do, but that's just the tip of the iceberg, and we're going to unpack more about who we are during this event. But before we do, at this time, I would like to introduce to you the director of the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration, who will be kicking things off. Hey, please welcome Nick Maduros. Nick? Hey, thank you so much, Chris, and thank you, everybody, for joining us. I'm I'm here at my house working remotely, as most CDTFA team members have been now for quite a while due to due to COVID, although we will uh, move at some point uh, to more of a hybrid working uh, environment. As the video mentioned initially, and as Chris mentioned, you know, we do strive to provide all of our team members with a great work-life balance, um, and that's something that we're definitely committed to as a department. I just want to thank everybody for joining us. I know you have a lot of demands on your time and a lot of places that you can consider working and, and we're thrilled that you uh, are considering CDTFA. Um, you know, I joined the department about four and a half years ago as the director and uh, when the department was formed. And don't feel bad if you don't understand all that CDTFA uh, does. Before I joined, uh, I had paid sales tax, um, but that was about as you know extensive as my experience with uh, sales tax had gone and i've just found it to be a fantastic place to work and and i really hope that you'd consider joining us uh, to make it even better uh, if i could just make a few points you will not find a better team of uh, 
colleagues anywhere. Um, just great people and you'll meet a lot of them today. Um, and we're working together to create a great culture uh, where, as, as Chris mentioned, we have work-life balance and uh, you know a really inclusive uh, and welcoming environment for all of our team members and, and really welcome and celebrate people's differences and skills. Uh, you'll hear, I, I hope, a lot today about the great training we provide. You know, working for the state and particularly working at CDTFA, it's not just a job. You know, we really are working to provide our team members with a career, uh, with upward mobility, um, you know, retirement benefits that are really incredible by, uh, uh, you know, when compared to other options out there. And, uh, you know, just a, a real culture of togetherness. And the last thing I, I want to mention, uh, which, you know, I I don't know how top of your mind it is when you're looking for a job at the beginning, but trust me that it becomes incredibly important over time. Uh, at, at least that's what I've found in my career. At CDTFA, we are doing really important work that you will feel good about doing. And, you know, we all have days uh, at work when, you know, it's we'd rather uh, stay in bed or do something else. And having that extra motivation, knowing that what you're doing is vitally important to your neighbors, to your community, to your state is really invaluable. Um, as the video mentioned briefly, we collect, you know, last year we collected more than $75 billion in uh, tax and fee revenue that goes to support all of the things that make uh, this a great place to live. You know, our schools, our um, police and fire, our parks, our natural resources and healthcare, so many other things. And without the team here at CDTFA, you know, those things would not be possible. And that's just one more reason why I hope you'll consider joining uh, that team uh, because you will not find a more fulfilling, more important job uh, anywhere else. Anyway, with that, uh, again, thank you so much. Please, uh, if you've got questions for anybody or for me, you, uh, you'll have a chance to ask those. You'll, you can find us. Um, we want to be a resource for you as you try and navigate this process. Uh, and with that, I will turn it back over to Chris and uh, the rest of the program. Hey, thanks, Nick, for those words. Now, as Nick said, as a reminder, if you have any questions or comments, please send those to recruitment at cdtfa.ca.gov. Those questions submitted will be answered at the end of our live broadcast. Please put your name and location. Now, you might ask yourself, why does CDTFA care so much? Well, at CDTFA, integrity and honesty are at the heart of our organization. We aim to maintain high ethical standards. The team members care about what we do, how we do it, and the people we serve. And we need candidates just like you in the area, I should say, in all areas of our department. Now, coming up next is a person who is always excited to work here. We have Alicia Gibson, who is a tax, excuse me, a business tax administrator. She's been here at the CDTFA for over 15 years. She's going to tell her, tell us her career path and why she chose CDTFA. Thank you, Chris. I guess you know that I'm only 24 then, and I've been here, you know, for a really long time. Yeah, working here is really, you know, an, an amazing place to work. And I'm not just saying that because they pay my salary, even though they do. Um, but I mean, can you imagine working at a place where you're just really excited to come to work every day? You know, one where you realize that what you do matters. Um, it affects, you know, your daily life. You're contributing to society, like Nick said earlier. Um, we have so many benefits here. You know, when you're thinking about, you know, where do you want to work for the rest of your life? This is one of those places that you really want to be at. We have something called, you know, besides teleworking, we also have something called hoteling. So you're, if you're in one of our, you know, you select one of our 22 field offices, then you may want to, you know, stay at one of the other ones because you're closer to it. Um, they said that our coworkers become like family. We celebrate, you know, each other's milestones. We have every, <laughs> every major holiday off. Um, 
So just think about all those things when you're trying to think about your career choice. I know sometimes when you're fresh out of college, you kind of don't know what you want to do. I had never even heard of this agency when I started. I graduated from the University of California at Riverside and I applied all over, but we didn't have this opportunity where you got to select where you want to work like you guys do have now. So I ended up working in Oakland, even though I was in Southern California. But the great thing about trying to get a job here right now is not just the opportunities that are available as far as being able to select where you want to work, but the promotional opportunities. So, you know, stay tuned, listen to what everyone has to say later on, because this is one of those big decisions that can affect the rest of your life. And we are so worth it. And we hope that you guys are too. Back to you, Chris. Wow, Alicia, what an incredible journey and career path. We definitely love your enthusiasm and commitment, definitely. Thank you so much for carving out some time. We'll see you soon at the breakout sessions. And I gotta say, folks, like, you know, coming up, this generation has an opportunity to pick the location. I didn't get that when I was trying to apply. Uh, now, coming up next, we have Stephen Ho also a business tax administrator. He will share with us the statewide hiring program and what is being offered here and when to apply. Stephen, go ahead and take it away. Thanks, Chris. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Stephen Ho and I work at the Sacramento field office. Uh, I'm actually in the office today, if you can see. Hope you guys like my plant there that I just put over. Um, <laughs> I'm also a business taxes administrator one, which is basically another name for a first line supervisor. Uh, I'm here to introduce you, guys, introduce you guys to the statewide hiring program in our agency. Um, so what is statewide hiring program? Well, basically it's a mass hiring program that aims to hire the best and brightest talents uh, to a field office of your choice. Uh, you can choose one of 22 field offices up and down the state, uh, El Centro being the office that is furthest south in California and then Redding being the office that is uh, furthest north. So when and where can you apply? Uh, well, the application links for these two positions are now live and posted on the Cal Careers website. Uh, and as Chris stated earlier, the, the final filing date to submit your application is on November 1st, 2021. So I recommend that you complete and submit your applications before that date uh, in case you need to resolve any issues that may arise. Also, when searching for these two positions, make sure that the location for the positions is one that states the United States. Um, there will be multiple TA and BTR positions posted uh, with locations in different counties. And again, the positions for this statewide hiring, uh, this statewide hiring program uh, will have the location set at the United States. For more information about those links, um, They'll be coming up in this presentation, but if you need additional information after that, be sure to join our help. How do I apply breakout session scheduled at 1.10 p.m.? And that's it. Back to you, Chris. Hey, thanks, Stephen. It's great to hear there's so much opportunity here. Um, it's great. It's a great time to join the state and hit the ground run, running, folks. Now, as a reminder, if you have any questions or comments for today's event, send those to recruitment at cdtfa.ca.gov. Those questions submitted will be answered at the end of the live broadcast. And don't forget to put your name and your location. Now let's talk um, some more to our some other team members. Today we have Stephanie, a business tax compliance specialist from the Oakland office or the O and Sam who is a tax auditor from Fresno to give their perspective on what it's like to work here at CDTFA. Hey Stephanie, Sam, how's the weather down there? Hey Chris, good morning. You know it's raining but good thing we get to work from home. I never had to step foot outside and I'm logged in, I'm working so it's good. Thank you. Oh, don't you love it? Don't you love it? Now folks in this segment I, I have a few questions to vote for both of you, and we'll start with you, Stephanie. Um, so you're a business tax administrator in compliance. Um, what is kind of a day in the life of a business tax representative compliance rep? So a day in the life of a business tax representative that we're here, you know, recruiting for is assisting the public. So all throughout the, today, we're going to refer them as taxpayers. Uh, we assist them with filing their sales and use tax returns, paying their account balance. It's sort of like paying your cell phone bill. 
If you're utilizing the online services and you need help um, paying that bill, you call us and we're there to assist you. Um, we do have some taxpayers that are unable to pay their account balance. Um, so we're there to assist with setting up payment plans. And believe it or not, there are taxpayers that do not pay their taxes, right? They see a bill, they try and run from it, and then they see us calling, and then they just, you know, try to decline our calls. So, you know, maybe we'll have to go out in the field at times to show our presence, let them know that, you know, we're here to help you. Don't run from us, right? Um, so we're here to, you know, protect the state's best interests by collecting the monies that's due to the state of California. Um, and just making sure that we're there to help them and the public. So that's pretty much a day in the life of a BTR. Uh, very cool, Stephanie. What about you, Sam, a tax auditor? What is it like to be a tax auditor, a day in the life? Uh, well, a day in the life of a tax auditor, a day in my life as a tax auditor, is I have a consistent 10 to 15 cases that I'm auditing. Um, and it, it, it differs, not, not every day is the same because um, these cases that we have, we're dealing with grocery stores, liquor stores, uh, clothing stores, basically any industry that deals with sales and use tax, that's what we're, we're auditing. And as a tax auditor, um, you, there's always three outcomes. Um, they've underpaid and they're due a liability. There's no change. They've been doing everything correctly. And uh, they overpaid. There was a clerical error and they overpaid. Uh, so when auditing, those are the three things that you're looking at. Um, and it's also, as a tax auditor, it's also your your job to kind of educate the taxpayer. I mean, there are, every year, there's thousands of new business owners, and they really don't know what they're doing uh, sometimes. So it's my job as a tax auditor to kind of educate them on the tax and laws and regulations of the tax code law. Also, I'm stationed out of the Fresno office, um, and so we do travel. So we are going to these businesses. Um, to do these audits. Uh, like I said, I'm in Fresno. Sometimes I'll have to drive all the way up in the mountains to Oakhurst. Um, and I also get to see the beautiful scenery going over there. So, I mean, that's just a little bit of the gist of uh, a day in the life of a tax auditor. Wow, very cool. Sounds really busy, but you know, you, you, it sounds like there's a perk in, in travel. Other than travel, what are some other, the per other perks at working at the CDTFA, Sam? Well, I mean, working at the CDTFA, you always talk about uh, government benefits. I mean, you heard it earlier, the pension. I mean, as a husband and a father of two, um, I would say the healthcare is is amazing. It puts my mind at ease. Um, we have great dental, vision. I mean, uh, all of that is is great. And I would say uh, vacation. I mean, I'm and I'm mobile working. I'm currently working from home. So if you hear any of my kids right now in the background, that's what that that's what that screen is. Um, but I mean. That's a little bit of the perks that I'd say. I mean, there's so much more. I mean, the the culture uh, of the CDTFA is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm I work um, how sh how should I say eight nine hour days, so I get every other Monday off. So I mean, every other week I'm getting a three day weekend. Um, if my if my kid wakes up sick, I'm able I'm actually able to take sick time for my child, which is amazing. I have currently well, come next month I'm actually taking uh, a month off uh, going out of the country. So, I mean, I don't know, not too many jobs that allow you to take that much time off um, other than the, the CDTFA. So most businesses usually have the two week vacation, which you have to take before the end of the year or else uh, they pay you out or expires. So um, that's pretty much, uh, well, actually let me add the training. The training that the CDTFA has is absolutely amazing. I mean, most people when they start new positions, they're actually um, they're actually stressed out, a lot of anxiety. I mean, when I started after this, the first day, I was my mind was at ease. You're actually set up with a one-on-one -on -one in house trainer that actually helps you for the first couple of months uh, going over all your audits. So by the time he's able to branch off, you're you're good to go. On top of the in-house uh, training that the CDTFA offers, I mean, we overtrain if anything. And um, I'd say I've been here a little over four years and I still go to uh, senior auditors if, if I'm not too sure about a certain industry and get all the help that I need. So it's, it's absolutely amazing. 
Yeah, I, I got to say the training when you start here, you get immediately and and like you said, you know, anxiety the first day and then you're at ease. Uh, and then you also mentioned uh, telework. I love it. I got to say uh, when I was in private sector, I was always in the office. But now, hey, telework is great. I'm in the office. I'm at home. So that's th those are really cool perks. What about you, Stephanie? What do you like working? Uh, what do you like best working here at the CDTFA? So there's a lot of things that I enjoy about <clears throat> CDTFA. I think number one is work-life balance. As Sam mentioned, he's a husband, he's a father, just like me. Um, I'm a mother of one and I'm also a wife. So just being able to balance between working, which you have to work, right? Um, and just being the being at home. So at five o'clock, I'm there cooking dinner. I get my workout in. On nice. the weekends, I get to hang out with my family and friends. So it's really important. I think, you know, time is money. I have friends that work in the private industry and um, they're not able to enjoy as much as I do. So um, another thing is upward mobility. Um, CDTFA really does invest in their employees. So um, I can speak from my own experience. I started um, at the very bottom. I worked my way up. So just working really closely with upper management, letting them know what my plan was for my future. Um, they helped me and I helped myself get to where I want to be. The last thing I would say is office culture. Um, we celebrate, you know, birthdays, weddings, um, baby showers, you name it. And just being able to like your coworkers and like your, your boss, it really truly means a lot. Um, I've been here for eight years and I could see myself really retiring here. It's kind of scary to say that, right? In my early 30s, I could really see myself here for the next 30, 40 years. I can't see myself working anywhere else. So those are the, the top um Perks about working here. Hey Stephanie, hey, talk about starting from the bottom. Now we're here. You did a you did an amazing <laughs> job. Now, when you first started or before you started, did you have any apprehensions when you applied um, for the state? Most definitely. I was straight out of college. I was 23 years old, living with my mom and dad at the time. My mom, she's like, you need to get a job and you need to, you know, there's a lot of pressure when you get out of college, right? You have to be successful and you have to find a good job. So it was a lot um, of pressure on me. So I'm so glad that I ended up, you know, looking into the state. Um, you know, I'm a supervisor now, but when I joined eight years ago, I did not start as a supervisor. I started um, as an office technician. I worked my way up to a business tax representative, then to a business tax compliance rep. And now I'm supervising those team members that um, was me at one point. So um, I hope that get to, you know, get people like we, we're people that we're talking to today. Uh, we have presenters later on that will help with the application process. I know that was one intimidating factor for me applying for this state. I just didn't really know where to go, who to apply for. So please, please consider CDTFA. It's a really great place to work. Yeah, definitely. I know that application process was difficult when I when I tried. Um, but let's go back to Sam and, and have you close it out. What are some of the essential qualities needed um, for your success or to succeed in the CDTFA? Um, I would have to say a big one is good communication skills, because like I said, as an auditor, you're dealing with taxpayers from all walks of life. I mean, California is one of the most diverse states in the country, so you're getting all sorts of um, taxpayers. And so you have to you really have to get a have a good communication, uh, have really good communication skills to kind of communicate what's going on in the audit and what they're doing um, wrong and how to help them report correctly. Um, second, I would have to say um, you need to have a, a, a good work ethic. I mean, if you have a good work ethic, just like Stephanie, she started, like you said, from the bottom all the way to, to soup. So if you have a good work ethic, you're going to do just fine in the CDTFA and your upward mobility will be amazing. Um, multitasking, like I said, as an auditor, I'm working on 10 to 15 cases. So you have to be able to multitask and be able to prioritize. Um, so having having those three um skills I think is is very important for the CDTFA. Well, friends, hey, thank you so much for sharing your experience. We'll see you soon at the next breakout sessions. Thank you so much, Chris. See Thanks, you soon. guys. Now, next on deck, we have another video describing our organization's culture. Media team, take it away.
We work smart, in tandem contributing our best to every program. We host executive leadership development programs that focus on communication and accountability. CDTFA offers training, encourages partnerships, and celebrates our diversity. Our Diversity Inclusion Office is committed to attaining a diverse workforce representative of California's labor force and promotes a positive work environment. Being given the opportunity to be a part of a diversity and inclusion celebration subcommittee has allowed for me to share my passion and dedication about finding common connections and learning from one another. It is not only knowing one another's uniqueness, but also taking action with that knowledge. Our team members are actively involved in food drives, supporting veterans, and helping local services. CDCA. Meeting today. Well, welcome back, everyone. Um, you know, just going back to our last segment, I know when I was in college, I was, you know, I was trying to apply for the state back then. And at least for me, it, it was kind of difficult. Maybe it was because I didn't have a degree yet, but I hear now it's not that essential. But coming up next is Miriam Dominguez, who's going to explain the, the opportunities we have if you don't have a degree or background in accounting and what positions you can apply for. Miriam, the stage is yours. Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Miriam Dominguez, and I'm a staff services manager with the Customer Service Center. Just like most of my colleagues, I started straight out of college, graduated from the University of California, Davis, with a degree in managerial economics. Uh, back in 2011, I started as, as a business taxes representative with the Irvine field office. After a few years, I promoted to a business taxes compliance specialist with the customer service center, also known as CSC. Uh, from there, I promoted to a supervisory position as a business taxes administrator one, and then to my current position as a staff services manager. So as you can see, the majority of my work experience has been with the CSC. So let me tell you a little bit about our department. CSC is an inbound call center. We answer phone calls received from our 1-800 phone number and assist taxpayers with CDTFA's online services, such as registering for a seller's permit, filing their sales and use tax return. We also answer general questions regarding all of the tax and fee programs that CDTFA administers. We also have a very intense training program that goes on for four to six weeks. It's currently a virtual classroom setting led by one of our trainers, and it also includes a shadowing component where you're paired with a seasoned tax technician one. Once training is complete and you are released on your own, there are resources available to help you succeed in your position. We have an assistance line where our trainers are readily available to assist you if you need help while you're on a live phone call. CDTFA also has an upward mobility program that many of our employees take advantage of. Through this program, CDTFA reimburses the cost of tuition and books for those courses required for the business taxes representative and tax auditor positions. Ultimately, the knowledge and experience gained at CSC as a tax technician makes our employees highly sought after throughout our agency and the state of California. Many move up very quickly. One example is our chief for the customer service center, Mr. Thor Dunn, who started as a tax technician and moved his way up to his current position. Currently, we do have a job posting for the Tax Technician 1 position. It's a great way to get your foot in the door and get trained. The minimum qualifications for this position is the equivalent of a high school diploma. If you have any questions or would like to know more about this position, I encourage you to join our breakout room. And now I'll hand it back to you, Chris. Hey, thank you, Miriam, for all the information. And hey, go Davis. <laughs> now, when I graduated from UC Davis in the 2000s, the economy was a lot different back then. It was really difficult to find a job. It literally took me one year to find a job. Um, and as I said earlier, today, unemployment is, a, is at a high rate, and the CDTFA, CDTFA is part of a statewide hiring project. 
and California wants you to join us and be part of that growing workforce. The CDTFA is moving forward and we are continuously investing in our team members with many promotional opportunities, diversity and inclusion initiatives, mentoring programs, multi-level recognition programs, and on-the-job training. You know, I can't say this enough. Um, when I when I joined the state from the private sector, it was a breath of fresh air. Working for the state provides a reliable source of income, uh, great benefits, and an incredible work-life balance. This is really, guys, the premier place to work with stability. So don't forget to stick around and join our breakout sessions. Now, as a reminder, if you have any questions or comments for today's events, send those to recruitment at CDTFA. .ca.gov. And don't forget to put your name and location. Now, next on deck, we have two other team members that are going to share their experience and expertise on job searching and the application process. Let's welcome Irene, a business tax specialist in San Jose, and Isaac, a staff services manager in our human resources unit. Hey, Isaac, we're going to start off with you. Take it away, Isaac. Hey, thank you so much, Chris. Welcome all. Big shout out to all of you for joining and taking the next step in your careers. We really appreciate uh, your time and patience. Uh, my name is Isaac Obando. I'm one, I'm one of the recruitment and outreach managers representing uh, Human Resources today. Uh, I've worked with the agency just a little bit over two years, but I have over nine years of state experience. So I've made the transition uh, to CDTFA and it was one of the best decisions I've ever made for my career. Um, Irene. Hey Isaac, how's it going? <laughs> going good. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone. It's just the afternoon. Uh, my name is Irene Chung, and I've been with CDTFA for almost 13 years, right after I graduated from Sac State. So go Hornets. Um, I started as a BTR, or Business Texas Representative, in Oakland, and now I'm currently a Business Texas Specialist in San Jose. So I got to experience moving up the career ladder and got to also hop from one field office to another. And for this segment um, of the presentation, I'm going to be go over, going over three easy steps on how to get started and how you can apply with our agency. Um, there's, it's very informational, so make sure to take lots and lots of notes. Uh, Isaac yeah. and I will try to make it fun for you. He is my man, manning the PowerPoint. <laughs> yes, and if you have any questions, please feel free to send them to the recruitment mailbox. But also we have uh, the breakout sessions, as Chris has mentioned throughout, as well as we'll be following up with an email to everyone with the jobs that we're speaking about, including our tax technician one, that Marion spoke about, as well as our business taxes representative and our tax auditors. So we'll begin our presentation. We apologize for any technical difficulties ahead of time. Uh, let's see. Take it so away, Irene. While Isaac um, pulls it up. So we're gonna go over three easy steps, as I mentioned. The first step we're going to help you navigate through is how to create your own CalCurs account, how to complete an exam or an assessment, and search for jobs and apply. So once you get to uh, the CalCurs website, which is calcareers.ca.gov or jobs.ca.gov, uh, we want to specifically point out to you some of the features on this page. One is to create an account or login on the top Right. The second one is the advanced job search feature. And the third is the exam or assessment search. And for this presentation, we're going to show you how to create your own Cal Career accounts. So the purpose of the Cal Career account is to be utilized to participate in the exam assessment process and to apply for jobs. So when you get to this page, you need to put in your information just as you will with any application. But before you create the um, your account, before you cre uh, press the create account button, make sure you write in your login and password information. So once you've created your CalCurr account, your page will look like this. And we're going to move down the menu options. 
to the application templates or the STD 678. This is pretty much your application to apply for jobs. You can create one application or you can create multiple tailoring to different jobs such as uh, accounting or call, call center or IT and such. You can also upload and save any other attachments if you need to, such as your resume, your school transcripts, and a survey monkey confirmation page. And if you need assistance, you can also watch tutorial videos. So from here, we're going to um, navigate down the menu options and we're going to head down to the exams slash assessments applications. I think Isaac's having a lot of fun with the animations. All right, so uh, once we get to this page, you will then be able to search for exams or assessment. We have a quick snap of the two positions that we are promoting. Um, you can search by the name or filter by our department. So we're going to do a search on the tax auditor position and we're going to view the exam position posting for the tax auditor. Uh, this is the page where you will have information regarding tax order, so make sure you read this bulletin and select the review, the official exam bulletin, which will give you more details about the position and it will have the link to take the exam. So this is what the exam bulletin will look like and it will give you a lot of details of the position. Please make sure you allow time to complete the exam. It's going to take you about an hour, hour 15 minutes and you need to do it in one sitting. And do not be afraid when you hear the word exam. It's more of a self-assessment and it will ask you questions based on your knowledge, experience, skills and abilities. Okay, we're going to move on uh, to show you what after you have taken um, the exam or assessment, then it's time to apply. So on the menu options, we're going to select the job applications to search for jobs. Here, you can also see the job applications you've submitted and archived. And you can search by the name of the position or filter by our department name. Your search will result in something like this. Uh, make sure to note the location to make sure you're applying to where you want. Uh, for this particular posting that we currently have, the location for these two will say United States, which is how Cal Career lists it since we're posting for all of our 22 locations in California. Uh, these, um, as we mentioned, these two post postings, the final filing date is November 1st, which is a Monday. So make sure you complete all three steps to apply by then. And now we're going to head to view job posting. So this is what the job posting will look like. Make sure to read the entire job posting and double check the locations. As you can see, the positions listed, um, pretty much all our offices throughout the state of California. Um, and this is where you will want to apply for. And the things we wanna point out um, on the job posting are the minimum requirements, the additional documents, the desirable qualifications section of the job posting. So make sure you view these so you can tailor your application to make sure you've completed what is needed. Hey Isaac, is there anything else here you wanna point out to us? Thank you, Irene. So um, as Irene is going through that, this is a critical component of not just saying read the entire job advertisement, reading the entire exam bulletin, just to say it. It really is important because here within the additional documents on every single job ad, it's gonna include an actual uh, duty statement. So the duty statement is a literal breakdown of the job and duties, uh, and it breaks it down even to a percentile. So if the job does opening mail, making phone calls, answering email boxes, 50% uh, of the time, the duty statement will list that. And it'll list all the remaining 50% of the job responsibilities as well. So what better opportunity to utilize the duty statement to tailor your application for the job that you are applying for and that interests you? not only to make sure that the job is a good fit for you,
but that it's something you truly want to do and seek a career in. So uh, the duty statement is one of the most critical components of the application process. Every job ad has it. Pull it up, save it as a PDF while you complete your application side by side, uh, utilizing keywords, identifying what the job entails and things of that nature. But another thing also as well as the desirable qualifications. These desirable qualifications are kind of external things, kind of to what Sam and um, Stephanie were speaking about earlier, of what the supervisor and the programs are really looking for, right? Uh, being able to foster a good relationship, having experience in Excel, Outlook, QuickBooks, Word, being a self-starter, having good communication skills, which is uh, one of the most vital things within the job itself as well. So looking at those things and applying those to your application, and tailoring it for every single job application you apply for, in hopes that you're applying for both of our positions as well as our tax tech mission one. Back to you, Irene. Thank you for the details, Isaac. Well, we're going to tell you for the application requirements. There for both positions there, make sure you submit uh, what you see on the screen. <laughs> uh, make sure your application or your exam employment application, the STD 678 is the current version. And also, you want to make sure you submit any transcripts you have. And so after you take in your assessment, you're actually ready to apply. And there is a questionnaire, which is a survey on server monkey, which asks about your education and job experience. Once you've completed it, make sure you upload the confirmation page to your application. Hey, Irene, I think we got a question earlier in regards of uh, school transcripts when applying for our tax auditor and business taxes representative. Uh, do those need to be official transcripts or unofficial or both? Uh, it could be unofficial Either. or official, but if you want to save a little bit of money, send in the unofficial. Perfect. Thank you so much. OK, so once you're ready to apply, um, once you've gather, gathered all the documentation you need, you are ready to select the apply now on the job posting. And it's going to bring you to this page. So you want to make sure you select your eligible after you have taken the assessment and then select apply for this job. Hey, Isaac, what happens if I don't have eligibility at this time? Uh, perfect. So if you haven't taken the job and you click apply now by accident or want to actually apply, you can actually click I want to obtain eligibility on this screen and it's actually going to take you to the exam bulletin for the job that you're applying for. So if you uh, don't follow the instructions earlier and get to this page, uh, you can definitely uh, click here. I want to obtain eligibility at this point. Isaac, I think your dog wants to apply too. I think he's very interested, yes. <laughs> All right, so once you applied, um, you can go ahead and upload your applications. You have two options. Uh, you can submit or upload one that you have already previously completed or use a blank application. For the purpose of this presentation, we're going to show you what it looks like to use a blank one. Okay. So um, once you complete the information, your basic questions, information, and when you get to this section, which is the education section, you want to make sure you enter all the information, including all the colleges and universities you've attended, so we know you met the minimum requirements for this part. And if you have any applicable licenses or certificates uh, you have worked hard for, so you want to show them off. And if you already completed an application template ahead of time, you can feel free to go back to double check you've entered all the information um, that you need to. All right, so for the experience section, please make sure you um, complete the form and put in all the uh, employment dates, job titles, company names, addresses, but most importantly, the duties you've performed. So Isaac, how do we know if an applicant has been thoroughly submitted? Uh, so we get this question all the time. Um, we try to demystify the application process by giving these type of PowerPoints and presentations because it is sometimes a difficult process if you've never applied. So our best recommendation is for each job or volunteer or internship, internship experience you may have, uh, please make sure to enter the employment dates 
<clears throat> excuse me, job titles, company names, company addresses, your supervisor's name, supervisor's phone number, your hours worked there, and most importantly, the duties performed. The duties performed section, which we'll show in the next slide, uh, you definitely utilize that section to ensure that your application is thorough by treating every single one of those experiences as an opportunity to shine a spotlight on your knowledge, skills, abilities, and experience related to that position you're applying for. So kind of going back to my previous statement, you utilize a duty statement, keywords, and the functionalities and the things that are needed for that job uh, to put in your information if it is applicable or if you have that experience. Uh, one thing is if you don't list it here on the duties performed section of the application or the experience section, the hiring manager cannot assume based on your classification or job title or um, or what job duties you perform now or in a previous position. You must tell them. Don't forget to list any special projects you participated in. The hiring manager can only evaluate your application based on the information listed. This is a critical component. If you don't list it, they cannot give you credit. Do not limit your chances of an interview by doing this. This will give you the best shot of receiving an interview when applying for CDTFA. Great, thank you, Isaac. Um, I think we're going to show them where to put the duties performed. So make sure you put the details in there. Um, and to sum it up, just as Isaac said, do not limit the chances of an interview. So our last step um, is to review your application package. You want to make sure you view the checklist to make sure you got everything, view the form, the employment application to make sure all your grant information made it and attach your school transcripts and most importantly as well, the supplemental questionnaire confirmation page. Once you've got everything, select save and review the application and then submit. And remember, apply before November 1st. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at recruitment at cdtfa.ca.gov. And don't forget the survey monkey confirmation page. So that wraps up for my section. Um, and now I'm going to pass it over to Isaac to share a little bit more about um, our agency. Thank you, Irene. Perfect. Uh, so thank you everyone once again for your time. My name is Isaac Obanda. I'm one of the recruitment and outreach managers. So I'll just piggyback off of Irene's information and go just a little bit, uh, take a little bit deeper dive of CDTFA as an organization in hopes that uh, you do find us as an employer of choice and being able to make a career out of CDTFA. Nick. Um, so before I go into our mission and goals, um, a quote I always like to read and really as I've gotten older is um, if you choose a job you love, you'll never have to work a day in your life. And I think that really speaks volumes at CDTFA because as you heard before, most of our uh, team members uh, are not just co-workers, right? We spend more times with our team members than we do sometimes with our family. Uh, now that we're working from home, that may be a little bit um, skewed, but if you're spending time with so many team members, you wanna make it as fun, as exciting, and as bearable as you can. And I think working at CDTFA really uh, speaks volumes to that. And I think um, all of you should definitely consider. So some of the things we do in our missions are uh, to promote and maintain a work environment free from discrimination, sexual harassment, and retaliation. So we are a state of California. We are an equal employment opportunity um, hiring agency, and we definitely follow those rules. What we also try to do is attract a diverse workforce reflective of the people uh, we serve in the state's relevant labor force. We also want to provide all employees and job applicants equal access to employment and upward mobility programs. I'll jump into a little, a few of those a little later, but we also want to recruit prospective applicants to the special advantages and features CDTFA has to offer. So we've been promoting those and we have the great opportunity of our business tax representative and tax auditors. Uh, you're able to choose which office in the entire uh, state of California, which is 22 offices, to be able to work out of. But we are hiring the best and brightest talent, but we want to make sure that we're offering our services to provide you more additional information in order to make your choice a little easier. We also put a big emphasis on our diversity. CDTFA is moving diversity forward. Uh, we have developed recruitment pipeline programs to increase diversity and broaden our talent pool. As you can see today, we have a diverse group presenting um, and we, we like to shine the light on that. 
So in addition to partnerships established by uh, Human Resources, our Diversity and Inclusion Office uh, has partnered with the Greater Sacramento Urban League, Sacramento Employment Training Agency, as well as the Los Angeles Urban League, um, Employment Development uh, um, Division, as well as um, Department of Rehab, many, many other opportunities we've encountered and these partnerships we've created in hopes to establish and create a greater pipeline for our agency in order to showcase our diversity and inclusiveness. Another another uh, great thing we're doing to move diversity forward is we have an upward mobility program. The upward mobility program was started in 2009 to include additional classifications uh, and give them actual stipends and reimbursements so they could go back to school in order for these candidates and team members to qualify for higher positions within our organization. So we have a contract here within the Sacramento area with Los Rios Community College where we're offering different accounting courses. So kind of to Stephanie's point where she started off as an office technician, you can start off at the lower classifications, get your foot in the door, and then be able to apply to the upward mobility program and take these accounting courses in order to promote to our higher level classifications and accounting uh, classifications. Next slide. Within our diversity and inclusion, we also have a committee which we celebrate our heritage months and so many different things. Here's an example of our Native American heritage months that we celebrated. We definitely have, uh, we have guest speakers that come on, speak about it, speak about unique things that they've encountered. And it's a great, great opportunity for everyone to join. We also celebrated recently, uh, th this past September, Hispanic Heritage Month. We actually had a few of our team members speak. Uh, and we actually had a team member, one of our executives actually showcase one of his specialty Hispanic uh, cooking um, plates, which was very, very unique, very tasteful. It was during lunch, I got very hungry. So that's not a good thing to look at, but it was a great opportunity for him to showcase uh, his culture and to promote it within our organization. Another way we're doing it is by training, right? LinkedIn Learning, we have a contract with them, which offers 112 courses and videos via LinkedIn Learning that speak about fair and equitable openness and respect, as well as confronting biases. But we also have our training and employee development section, which is also known as TED, which offers a plethora of different types of training, which include cultural diversity, emotional awareness and communication, making the unconscious conscious, managing conflict, unconscious bias, which is my uh, preferable uh, favorite one. But we also have training courses in writing, as well as Excel and things of that nature. So if you haven't already followed us on our social media platforms, please, please do it, especially our LinkedIn page where you'll be able to see all of our current uh, position openings, which we'll get into in a little bit, but also follow us on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Obviously, social media is the new wave, so please follow us on those for any updates and uh, critical information that we may be uh, presenting. So we'll quickly go over LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn, our website is linkedin.com forward slash company forward slash CDTFA. You'll be able to learn a little bit more information regarding our organization there on our LinkedIn page. You'll be able also to identify, uh, see all of our job uh, vacancies. So if you're not very familiar with Cal Careers, LinkedIn is the other option where you're able to do that from. So if you go, if you go to our LinkedIn page and click jobs, and then go ahead, you can go to the next one. And then you can click see all jobs. You'll be able to see all of the jobs available that we have presented on Cal Careers within our LinkedIn page. There are two ways to apply or at least submit your interest within LinkedIn. So if you're not very familiar with LinkedIn, I, I definitely recommend uh, getting that information out, creating your profile because we definitely offer all the opportunities on there. The first way I'll show everyone is the easy apply button. So you, where you see the arrow, if you click on the easy apply button, what will happen for a job that you're interested in, next slide, um, is where you'll be able to submit your application and interest. Here's where you'll be able to upload a resume if you'd like. It pretty much what it does is it sends your uh, profile information as well as your resume to the specific recruiter at, uh, at CDTFA. So once you click submit application, we'll be able to in-mail you, which the next slide will show, um, information regarding that position that you sought interest for. So we'll say, hi, uh, Irene, I saw that you're interested in our business taxes representative position. Here's a little bit more information uh, about that position. Here's a little bit more information regarding CDTFA. And then that also offers you the opportunity to schedule one-on-one -on -one with the actual recruiter. The second way is by clicking on the apply button. By clicking on the apply button, it actually takes you to the Cal Careers 
uh, paid for that specific position, which then you'll follow all of the instructions that Irene just went over by clicking on the apply now and either submitting your saved application or creating your application on the fly and then submitting all the required documents for that specific position. Next slide. Also follow us on Handshake. Um, if you are a current or previous college student, uh, because alumni can uh, have a Handshake profile, uh, we attended over 100 career fairs just this year alone. So we are investing in our staff by promoting our jobs, as I mentioned earlier. Please schedule our group sessions or one-on-one -on -one sessions with local recruiters. We have, I think, over 95 recruiters in the entire organization in every single one of our field offices, as well as our headquarters office in Sacramento. So please schedule a session with them. They'll be able to give you a little bit more information regarding our organization if you're interested, or better yet, if you're a sophomore or junior and you haven't graduated or don't meet the qualifications for the jobs we mentioned today, schedule those one-on-one -on -one sessions or group sessions next spring and meet with the recruiter. So that way, by the time you graduate or you're ready to graduate, uh, you've already uh, established yourself, you've already met a recruiter, you've already created those contacts and connections, and you're ready to apply by that time. Next slide. So in conclusion, we want you to find your purpose with CDTFA. Our goal is to hire the best and brightest talent. Our commitment is to help our team members build fulfilling careers doing work that matters and our aim is to be the employer of choice. We want all of you to join us at CDTFA. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, please send them to the recruitment mailbox at recruitment at cdtfa.ca.gov. And after today's presentation, if you ever have any questions after that as well, you can always send your questions or refer a friend, neighbor, family member to that mailbox as well. And we'll be able to set up a one-on-one -on -one with them to uh, go over everything we went over today and also the benefits within CDTFA. Thank you so much, Irene, and back to you, Chris. Hey, thanks, Isaac and Irene, for sharing and helping us out applying. That's a lot of information. I know um, from firsthand knowledge, I know it was difficult and complex to apply to the state um, when I when I first applied, and that's why we have Irene and Isaac to help us out. So definitely utilize these two. If you can stay for the breakout session, that would be awesome. You can ask more questions there. Now, speaking about questions, uh, coming up next is our Q&A. I will read the question and the subject matter expert will answer them. So give me one second so I can take a look at some of these questions and our subject matter experts should be ready to go. Um, it looks like one of our first questions is coming from Maribel from Bakersfield, and this is for you, Isaac. There are, a few, there are a few questions that I've come across from the website under the tax auditor section. I found practice questions and a few of them ask if there is any, if you have any tax experience. What if somebody doesn't have tax experiences? What is the chances? That's the first part. And then can somebody start as early as 6 a.m.? Oh, okay. Big shout out to Maribel and Bakersfield. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, you don't need specific experience. Uh, all you need to do is meet the qualifications. So you need specific accounting courses <clears throat> as well or having a degree. So uh, you don't need work experience with the positions that we're talking about today. If you have school experience and an education or a degree, and that's the unique thing within our positions, right? Uh, the demographics not only are uh, recent college graduates or college graduates that are graduating this specific semester, but it's anyone and everyone that meets the qualifications. So you don't necessarily need to have that information, but I can give you a little bit more information in our breakout sessions and be able to answer your specific uh, scenario in that fashion, but that's not necessary. Uh, I'll also forward um, after the call a few of our recruitment flyers that really go into detail on how you meet the qualifications. But the assessment, if you take the assessment, it'll ask you all those questions. If you have taken two intermediate accounting courses, if you've taken business law and stuff like that. But we can definitely answer them in the groups uh, in the breakout sessions. Now, Maribel also wants to know if, if she can start, if she gets hired, can she start at 6 a.m.? Is, is that even possible? Um, I'm not sure if it is possible, but it's uh, it's played by ear or your manager. Our core hours are to serve the customers. So core hours are eight to five. So any manipulation or any uh, differentiation of that in between those hours is okay. 
But in regards of starting at six, that you would have to speak with your supervisor or manager if you're hired uh, in order to see if your schedule could uh, allow for that and if you could complete your job task and daily duties uh, with those hours. But it's not out of the picture. It's just a case by case scenario. All right. Makes sense, Isaac. All right. This next question is going to Sam. Uh, Sam, this question is coming from Cindy in L.A. Do you guys offer any benefits if you are trying to get a CPA? Um, yeah, we do offer benefits. I mean, the state does offer up to $350 for uh, review courses, and you are allowed um, four hours for taking the exam. I know there's um, there's four sections, so you get four hours for each section to take the exam. And if once you've completed, um, you do. There is a thirty-six. Uh, there is a thirty-six hundred dollar bonus that's given. Uh, that's broken up into twelve hundred dollar payments over uh, the next three years. So um, those are the benefits that we do offer for the CPA. Oh, thank you, Sam. I appreciate that. Here's another question for Irene. Uh, my question was in regards to the application process. Uh, Mr. Ho, Stephen Ho, brought up sending in the application early uh, in case issues may arise. What are the typical roadblocks or humps that may arise in the process? This is coming from Pia in Burlingame. So you want to make sure that you have completed um, not just the application requirements, but also the minimum qualifications, which we discussed. So if you want to work on your application early before you graduate, you may go ahead and uh, do that process. Um, but in terms of if you're going to be graduating, let's say December, which is coming up very soon, you actually are eligible to apply as long as once you by the time you get offered the position and by the time you uh, get offered that you have a, you have met all the necessary requirements um, before you get offered the job. So it could be so if you apply now um, and if you get offered in January and you completed your courses in December, great, you're actually eligible by now. Um, Isaac, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, no, just everything you said. Yeah, I completely agree. Nothing additional. So let's get a little specific. We have another question coming from Anastasia. Her question is maybe it could be directed to Isaac or Miriam. She says, I will graduate from California State University in Northridge on May 25th, 2022. Is there any way I can apply before I graduate? So I, I can go first. So um, the great thing about this is it happens twice a year, uh, Chris, and I don't even think we mentioned it, right? I think that that's one of the greatest things. So we do it during the spring and the fall. We just had one in the spring. This is our fall edition. So next spring, when you're ready to graduate or when you're going to graduate, you can definitely apply to these opportunities. But if you meet the minimum qualifications for these jobs now, you can definitely apply now. But of course, you have to understand that they're full-time jobs and you'll have to balance your schoolwork and your work work uh, to make sure that you're able to complete the core hours and Monday through Friday and stuff like that. So if you're able to apply now and you qualify for it by taking the exam and seeing if you pass, you can definitely apply. But we do it every single fall and spring, and then you can apply for the spring one once those advertisements come up. And once again, once we host our virtual open house in the spring as well, because we like to do it uh, twice a year. Thanks, Isaac. Uh, this question is for uh, Stephen. Uh, if I am not sure which position I want to apply to, uh, business tax representative or tax auditor, which one better suits me. Am I allowed to take both of the assessment exams first and see how, how they go? First of all, Chris, what a wonderful question. Let me answer <laughs> that as thoroughly as I can. Uh, short answer is yes. Um, you can take both exams and you can take um, uh, the tax auditor and, and the BCR uh, exams and apply for both positions. Um, what I would advise also is if you wanted more in-depth, um, you know, insight on, on these two positions, uh, join one of our breakout sessions. Uh, we have two right now. We have a Northern California and we have a Southern California breakout session. Uh, we can go a little bit more in depth about, you know, the day-to-day, -day, uh, life day-to-day -to -day, um, 
work duties that we go through. Um, also, if we don't have enough time or we run out of time in those breakout sessions, um, you can contact a recruitment or you can contact us directly and then we'll tell you a little bit more about the day in the life of, you know, a VTR or a TA. Um, we can go, you know, we can have a good conversation and, and really get you to the position that you feel like um, you're, you're best suited to. Hope that answers your question. Thanks, Steve. I think you're like a natural salesperson. You already plugged the the breakout session. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, next question is 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 to Sam. Um, it looks like it's from Maribel in Bakersfield again. Uh, can you expand on what the day of a tax auditor looks like? Are the days really long? Maybe add a little bit more detail. So they really aren't uh, long. I mean, it's it's eight to five you schedule as you see fit between the hours of eight and five. It's not like uh, uh, in the private sector where I came from where we have long days during tax season. But as a tax auditor, I mean, you're you're auditing uh, businesses, so you're actually scheduling with the bookkeeper or with the taxpayer. You're actually going there reviewing financials. But I mean, you're not you're not expected to complete the whole audit that day. It's over a period of time, so you're actually able to uh, set your time for when you're visiting that business. So I mean, come five o'clock, you should be you should have been you should be out of there. So um, it's not not too long, and uh, like I said, you're just going through financials, and you'll have all the training, all the training you need uh, to be ready. Well, thank you, Sam. I, I definitely appreciate that. Um, we have another question. Uh, this could be for Irene. This is my first year in MSA program. I haven't finished my fall classes yet, which means I don't have the official transcript for those classes. I only have my two foundation course transcripts taken this summer. Can I send my foundation courses transcripts or or should I wait um, until the until I graduate in the fall? This is December. <laughs> so that is a great question. So um, you can send unofficial transcripts um, and if you have, which is what you have right now, which is incomplete, which is fine. But like I said, as by the time you have gotten the job offer or received the job offer, that is when you need to make sure you have completed all your classes. But for MSA, I believe you probably have met all the requirements as your undergrad. So I think you are eligible to apply at this time, even without your um, classes at your M MSA program. Irene, we have another question. Let's just stick with you. It's directed to you. Can I apply right away after the assessment? Definitely. You can re apply right away. You do not need to wait until November 1st. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Next question is, is for Isaac. This is from Alana from Cal State East Bay. Will students be able to get class time while at work? Um, well, with our upward mobility programs, they will be able to do that. Uh, but if you're not a state employee already or you haven't joined CDTFA or you join them and you're going back to school, um, odds are you would have to have that conversation with your supervisor to flex your schedule if necessary and things of that nature. So I think that's once again, it speaks volumes to our organization because I've spoken with a lot of team members and recruiters who let's say they coach their daughter's softball or soccer team on Fridays or Thursdays. They're able to flex their schedule and be able to go to their game, coach their game, and then be able to work the hours that they were off early or left early for on the next day uh, or within that same week. So those are the benefits of it. Uh, but of course, everything is a case by case. I don't want to tell you yes right now and then you join and then that's not even an option. But our upward mobility program, if you come work, if you join our organization and are accepted into that program and you're taking a course that is paid for by CDTFA and the state, uh, you're able to get off early, go take your exam, go study sessions, uh, go meet with your fellow uh, peers within the course. So that's a great, great program that we like to promote. Um, another one, uh, since you have me on here already, is uh, the apprenticeship program. It's a brand new program in CDTFA, where if you join our organization, you're able to apply to the apprenticeship program, which is through CalHR, the union, and several organizations, which we're one of. Uh, and you're able to actually apply for the job you want to, actually do the duties and the day in functionalities without qualifying for that job while also still going to school, uh, paid for by the state as well. So it's similar to the upward mobility program, 
but the only difference is you're doing that actual job. So first, see if you like the job to see what it entails, and then to gain that experience, which then you're able to put on your application and say, hey, I was in this job for two years as an apprentice. I did the day-to-day -day duties. I also obtained the coursework that is necessary for this job to qualify for. And by the end of the two years, you're a highly sought off candidate and qualified for that job in order for you to apply and obtain uh, the actual job itself permanently. So it's a great, great opportunity. And I think that speaks to our culture once again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Next question is coming to Miriam um, from Cindy from LA. During the application process, do we need proof or submit proof of a, an associate's degree? Um, if we haven't received it, does it hurt our chances for employment? Good question. Um, so you don't necessarily need to submit uh, a copy of the associate's degree, but you can submit a copy once you get um, a copy of that. Um, it doesn't necessarily hurt your chances. Um, I would say that it really depends on the position that you're applying for and the minimum requirements. All right, thank you so much, Miriam. I appreciate that. Uh, let's take a look at some other questions that we have. Uh, this one is directed for Stephen, coming from Emily from Bueno Park. Are all locations remote? Are all location remote working or should I apply any location close to my house? Another great question, Chris, and from Emily. Let me get into that question real quick. So um, for the statewide hiring, we're, we're hiring for the field offices and currently we're kind of in a transition state. Um, we're working, we're teleworking right now. Mostly, uh, most of our staff, uh, most of our team members are working remotely. Um, then when we transition back to the office, we're going to be teleworking up to 50% of the time. That's kind of the plan that's going on. Um, as far as applying to the office closest to you, yes, I would advise you to apply to the office that's closest to you. doesn't make a difference if you apply from one office to the other office, your chances. If, if you're a good candidate and you pass the interview, we're going to hire you to the office that you know that you choose so it's probably better to choose the one that's closest to you um yeah i hope that answers your question oh thank you steven appreciate that next question is for irene how many questions are on that assessment that is a great question and isaac has the answer <laughs> <laughs> wrong person oh man you guys th those are some good questions i i don't want to give the wrong answer so um I will follow up because I don't want to give the wrong answer, but like Irene had mentioned earlier, it does take around an hour to answer them. Uh, once again, it's not really a test. It's really an assessment. It'll literally ask you, have you taken this accounting course, this accounting course? Do you have experience as a loan officer? Do you have experience in the ability to do this and then the fourth? So I don't want to give the wrong answer, um, but if you move on to the next question, I'll, I'll find out in just a little bit. Well, you know, Isaac, the next question goes back, back to you. Any okay. positions outside of VTR and TA? Outside of the state of California or outside? Yeah, outside of just, these, uh, just these two positions. Oh, definitely. Uh, so Miriam spoke about the tax technician one. So if you're not an accounting student or you have no accounting background, that's completely fine because I don't. Um, you can come in as a tax technician one as long as you have a high school diploma. Uh, get your foot in the door, which is my always uh, best recommendation I can give. And then you can promote to those accounting courses by uh, taking those courses required for those courses or going up the other different types of ladders. So we have staff services analysts, associate governmental program analysts, office technicians, office assistants. Those are more of the general classifications in which if you have a degree or going to obtain your degree and have a little bit of work experience, you can qualify for. That's the route I took. So you can definitely come into those courses. We also have some uh, very limited student assistant positions. I think we have one for IT up as of right now, uh, but I recommend going to take a look at the office technician, office assistant, or staff services analyst, or associate governmental program analyst. Those are the four main ones that are outside of accounting that are general classifications. Now beware because the office technician and office assistant exam or assessment is actually a real exam. So with our accounting courses, they're really assessments, but the office technician, I think does short answer, um, math questions, 
multiple choice and things of that nature. So be careful with that one because that one uh, you will have to um, answer and do a little bit of research and analysis on that. So. All right. Thank you, Isaac. And we have one more question that just came in from Jose in Downey, California. It looks like it's it's to you again, Isaac. Last question before we close up shop. After reading the requirements for BTR, I still need to complete a course in accounting. I plan to complete this course, but can I apply before I complete this? Is it okay if I have a transcript with multiple schools? Uh, yes, so if you have, I'll answer the last question first. So if you have multiple transcripts from multiple schools, when you're uploading those for these two positions, uh, our best recommendation is to combine your transcripts um, and attach it as one attachment. Secondly, if you're currently enrolled in the course and um, currently enrolled in the course and you're able to complete it before the end of the semester, which state schools and here in California are December, uh, on your on your unofficial transcripts, it will have that course on it. We'll review it, determine hey he's in the course or he or she is in the course. And then if you are selected and hired at that time, we will ask for your official transcripts. So we'll give you a tentative offer until you provide that information. And then once you provide that information, we'll give you a start date and a final offer. But we have to identify that you're enrolled in the course, taking the course and actually pass the course mm -hmm. in order for us to give you a final offer. So that's the next step if you are selected and hired, of course. Thanks, Isaac. Uh, it looks like we got one more that just snuck in. It's for Alicia. Alicia, here's the question. Would these positions be a good opportunity for someone seeking a career change? I am not a recent graduate, graduate, but I do have a bachelor's degree and 14 years um, of work experience in customer service. What do you think? Oh, definitely. This is one of those places like we are not just looking for, you know, new graduates. Um, this is a time if you have a career change, this is the best opportunity to come abroad. I'm, I mean, aboard, not abroad. So, yeah, this is not just for new graduates. If you're looking for, you know, a career change, um, this will probably be one of those things that will change your life. There have been a lot of people that have started with the agency that had, you know, a career that spanned 20 years, you know, in private industry. So um, always take the opportunity because this is really the greatest place to work at. Thank you so much, Alicia. We appreciate that. Well, it looks like no other questions have snuck in. And friends, that's pretty much all the time we have for today. Coming up next are the breakout sessions and you'll see some links below. Um, the live session, this live session is recorded and it will be available and accessible next week on YouTube. Um, so first off, I'd like to give a big special thanks to all of the presenters, uh, the media team, everyone behind the scenes who, per who participated in the open house, and a big thank you to all of you for joining our live session. We hope this gave you some insight on who the California Department of Tax and Fee Administration is, what we do, and created more excitement for you to apply with us. As mentioned earlier and throughout this entire broadcast, you can receive many perks from working for the state. Uh, a reliable source of income, uh, definitely amazing benefits and an incredible work-life balance, promotional opportunities, diversity and inclusion initiatives, mentoring programs, and on-the-job training for you to flourish. We hope all of you really do consider and continue uh, your career path with, with us, the employer of choice. Um, just a reminder, the filing, the final filing date is on November 1st, and the most qualified candidates will be invited to participate in a panel interview tentatively in the early weeks of December. And your effective date would be tentatively in mid to late January. So folks, don't forget to apply by November 1st. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you at the breakout sessions.